Everybody's sitting on the south side where it's warmer. <laughs> All right. We'll start with the lighting of the Advent candle. Go ahead, Lee. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle of our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs. The first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Savior, born a king in the line of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And we believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us to rule the world wisely and to bless all nations. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us how we would, he would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace, and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and through him peace is found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said that you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Grace. And this morning we'll start off with our processional number 59.
our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play all over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. (coughs) On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 72. We'll say verses 1 through 7 and 18 and 19 by half verse, ending with a refrain. And it's on page 685 of the prayer book. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. 
that he may rule your people righteously and, and the poor with justice, justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He, he shall, shall rescue, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from, from one, one generation, generation to another. another. He shall come down like rain upon the moon field like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. And there there shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen, amen. By God's gift, justice and peace shall flourish. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, please be seated. Good morning. Now, I hope you all recall, I'm sure you do, how I'd said, and I said it last week, prior to the Advent season, I told you we were starting off with Apocalyptic Jesus. And we did. I also, similar to those movies, you know, which, where we see that glimpse uh, of the ending of the story, i.e. reverse chronology. That's what we heard last week in Advent 1. Now this week, we still don't get to hear a thing about baby Jesus. Not a thing about baby Jesus, Mary or Joseph. And we won't next week either. But we will hear something from James next, James next week talking about patience and waiting. But this week we blow right past the birth of Jesus. But yet we still hear a story of Jesus' coming. We hear John say, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who's more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. So if we were watching that movie still in reverse order, you know, we've got a glimpse of the ending, and now we're also getting a glimpse of 30 years down the line after the birth. Now, some of y'all may know that each year, you know, we go to Frank and Mary's for our Christmas party. And I usually get caught by Mary picking up the figures in the crease, you know, the nativity. And I take them and I move them. And she usually gives me heck for it. And I would do it at home too, but Kim has now started just saying, I'm going to put these somewhere else because he's going to move them. And I do that. In fact, I've read of other priests who do it, who have children in their congregations, to kind of show the story. You know, we're going to Bethlehem. We're not there yet. We're not there yet in this Advent season. But we're getting there. So we take the figures and move them out. Now, truth be known, I'll take the wise men and put them in another room because it's going to be a long time until they get there. But... You know, that's the way it is. And so, I think it's neat to do it, and it's keeping with the true story. But if we took today's story, and we take that same little nativity scene, and what if we put John the Baptist figurine in there? I've never seen a figurine for John the Baptist, but I bet it would be a, a big, bearded, burly guy dressed in, what did it say? Camel's hair, eating honey. So, ooh, John, come on, man. 
Can you imagine planting that right into your nativity scene? It wouldn't kind of, it kind of wouldn't go along with the, that, that theme uh, of our nice little story, you know, baby Jesus and all that. But that's okay. But why do you suppose we hear this story from John in our Advent season? John, John reminds me, well, someone reminds me of John. Now, we all go through Charlestown, do we not, at some time during the day, either for business or personal stuff, or, uh, or oh, Eamon's not here, I was going to say, go to Popeye's and get some lunch. So he's got to pass by the courthouse as well. And you've seen the gentleman. We glance up there, and there's a guy, he was bearded, wearing a hoodie, carrying a sign. You've seen it. You've seen it. And you think, oh, Lord, please let me get a green light. Let me get a green light, because I don't want to get stuck. That itinerant preacher, his eyes, his eyes may catch my eyes as he's preaching repentance. And that's just going to mess up my day. This man, like John, wants the world to be ready for the coming of Christ. John's calling, John is calling those there with him to reflect on their lives, to take a deep look, a hard look at where they are, what they're doing, and how they're living their life. I'd say this man is doing the same in town. John wasn't like a normal rabbi. The man in town is not like Someone standing up in the pulpit right now. And how many of, how many of us today say, say things like, oh, he ain't right. He ain't right. He must be off a little bit to be in there preaching repentance on the streets. And I venture to say that there were probably a good many that went out to see John in the wilderness and were saying something similar about him. After all, anyone who, who calls our lives to tasks, we have a tendency to reject. We get defensive. Oh, oh, oh. This man in town may cause discomfort as we sit at the stoplight and he's got his sign up calling on you to repent. If it makes you feel discomfort, if it makes me feel discomfort, good. It should. It should tell us something. Both of these guys, John and this man in town, are preaching God's word as it has been given to them. Repent. Repent. The world was broken then. In John's time, the world is broken now. But we have to look at ourselves and our lives and say, do we play a part in this brokenness? of this world? Do our actions help perpetuate the brokenness? Or are our lives a testimony to the saving power of Jesus Christ? John wants us to reflect and see what roles we may play when it comes to things like injustice and inequality, poverty, hunger, illiteracy, hopelessness, all those things that we see in this world. If we play any part in perpetuating those things and not working through the power of Christ to address them, then we are like the chaff in today's scripture. We are like the tree that bears no fruit to be cut down and thrown into the unquenchable fire. We are the brood of vipers at times. I'm sorry, this is the, not the nice little story of baby Jesus coming, but this is the reason Jesus comes. We have to take stock. We have to look at our ways, our behaviors. John calls us to do it. The man on the corner in town calls us to do it. What do we do? How do we bear this fruit worthy of repentance? We've got to resolve to live our lives in the way God wants us to, not our own. When we hear prophets like John and the man on the corner 
who preaches and catches our eye and we've got that weird feeling inside. That's a sign that maybe we need to make a change. We have to make those changes in our lives to prepare the way of the Lord. Christ has the power to transform all of us. We just have to open him, open up and let him in. Today, John bursts into our imagination and our little nativity scene, making clear the power and meaning of a, of a familiar story. John comes into our lives to make sure we know that Jesus, who is to be born into our lives, is coming to set us free from all those ways of the world, all those ways that rule our lives. John, that big, bearded, burly guy who smells wonderful, bursts into our lives to make sure we know that Christ is coming to save us so we may become his children and follow in his way. Amen. If you will, let's stand and turn to page 358. And we'll recite the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, of the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387. In our prayers today, let's remember Mag, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Bianca, Linda, Ann and Warren, Philip, Mark, Terry, Nancy and her family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Elizabeth, Honey, Dennis, Carolyn, Robert and Margaret, Michael, Jason and his family, Tanya, Rennell, Craig, Judy, Kenny, Dawn, Richard, Peter, Michael, Harold, Chuck, Georgia, Rick, Ann, Jimmy, Charles, Kate, Charlotte, Pam, Sandy, Catherine, Ray, David, Priscilla, Jimmy, the Smith family, the Malott family, Mike, Selena, Sherry, and Michael, our service members at home and abroad and victims of natural disasters, Christians around the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Mark, St. Albans, the Reverend Charles Pope, and our companion diocese in Columbia, the Reverend David Hincapi, Mission Santo Tomas. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all, all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may, may be glorified by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments, 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace. Peace in the cheap seats. Peace to people online. Uh, I glanced down at my phone and the first time I didn't see Nancy. Yeah. That struck me as I sat there. Uh, but uh, any other now? Oh, Wednesday night was great. We had about 10 people. Uh, Started off with prayer, great snacks. I don't know who made the popcorn, but it was great. The second batch. The second batch was, yeah, let's not talk about the first batch. I messed that up. The dog wouldn't even eat it. <laughs> so, anyway, I, yeah, I, I walked in, and Kim has got, I don't know, immediately, what did you do to the popcorn? What? It's fine. No, it's not. It smells awful. Go make another batch. I was like, I don't have time. Yes, you do. Well, it was done. We had cupcakes, we had no-bake cookies. I mean, I mean, there was all kinds of snacks. There was coffee, water, and we talked about God. We talked about God, we talked about Jesus, and especially in this Advent season, how, it, how our lives play out in different things. Uh, we got a couple of different things. We used the day-by-day, -day, and then we use a, a, a book Kim got from um, the spouses launching uh, at convention. I guess Melissa Calvin picked it out. So it was, it was really good. And I told them at St. Philip's when I said, y'all missed out on some enjoyment. So they were asking me again, what time? Uh, same type of time, same bat channel. Wednesday at 7. So if you can make it, great. Um, you got to get there early or else Dan will get all the food. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, is there anything... Vestry meeting right after church. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Eucharistic Prayer A begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in Lord heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.